Good evening, humans. Uh, how are we? Welcome to Gareth Jones Live. title sequence with four times the pictures, four times the detail, and hopefully four times the fun. Hello, good evening, how are we humans? Let's have a look at who's in the house. Oh, that's weird. I haven't got my chat window visible on the thing today. That's weird. Why isn't it doing that? Oh no, oh no. Um, I'm going to have to refer to my... Uh, other computer down here. That's disturbing and disappointing. Let's bring it up here. Let's see if we can do this. Uh, who have we got in the house? We have, uh, in order of appearance, ooh, if I can scroll this without messing absolutely everything up on my computer. In the front row, we have Rockin' Kitten from the Netherlands. Hello, Tintin. Uh, Lee Whiting. Hello, Lee. Welcome aboard. Nice to have you with us. Your first time. We were just talking on Twitter, I think, weren't we? Great that you're here, and I hope you got your mate Mike. Hello, Mike. Um, uh, BA55, BAR, that's Mark Sepek. Hello, Mark. Good evening. Clear skies at the Cape and downrange. Let's light this candle. Yes. Who watched the rocket launch? Well, the attempted rocket launch yesterday. Uh, we had a good go, didn't we? Um, it got close. What was it about 16 seconds before it was uh, aborted due to weather? Actually, it was kind of aborted long before then, but they waited for the weather to improve, and they waited until 16 seconds beforehand to say, no, this isn't going to improve. Why the heck have I got a calendar now visible on my computer? What's going on? Hang on, pop out, event filtering options... Pause alert queue, skip alert. What's happened to my uh, my um, uh, my uh, chat window? I'll have to go to manual doors down here. Um, uh, Stuart Rutter, Buffalo Trace Bourbon. Is that your choice of drink this evening, Mr. Rutter? Buffalo Trace Bourbon. I like a bourbon. I like a salmash. I like Jack. I like Jack and Jim. I like Jack and Jim, but... As usual, I'm having a penderin myself tonight. A slightly different penderin, again, because, you know, I finished the big one last night. This is um, Ayr, Welsh gold, but this one is uh, it's called Rich Oak, another variety of penderin. Oh, look at that. Me through a bottle of Welsh whiskey. Give the boy some colour, why don't you? Yeah, pen look at that bottle. That's a nice bottle. Actually, that was the first penderin. I ever had was this rich oak version which my great friend Danny Taylor bought me as a gift for doing uh, the Tommy Cooper show uh, and uh, yeah that started something that's the, I wrote to Penderin this week I told them that I've mentioned their booze on the program they haven't written back not yet maybe they're drunk it's possible um who else we got in the house uh R Ramis Rachel Noll okay Stand by then. Let's see if we can get this right. Hold on. Uh, uh, where did I put my notes? I made some important notes. You'll see why in a moment. Now, as you know, Rachel is one of the two people who watch this program uh, from the Netherlands and uh, was someone who watched me on Music Box years and 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 years, and years ago. And so I have a particular debt to uh, Rachel and all the other Dutch people who watched me back then because they were my first ever audience. So let's see if I can get this right. Uh, Finje Vaar Jag, me and friend, 
Vin je wel daar? Mijn vriend. Vin, vin je wel daar? Oh, nou, ik wens je één keer weer jaaldag. Happy birthday to you. Rachel, it's your birthday today, I noticed. Happy birthday and apologies for murdering happy birthday in Dutch. I bet you don't even sing that. I bet you have a different melody and a whole different thing, don't you? I'll have to see what you say. Uh, Brian Thomas. Whoa, big lightning and thunder in Ohio. Oh, Brian. Brian. Well, let's hope. It gets that out of the way today so that the second attempt to launch uh, Dragon on the Demo 2 mission tomorrow is safe and clear. 8.22 tomorrow evening. Don't miss it. That's BST UK time. It'll be different wherever you are. I should be watching. Absolutely. Blaze of Glory 2011. Been here since Eddie's show last night. Anyone got some popcorn and pizza? Evening, Mr. Jones. Evening, Blaze of Glory 2011. Um, you'll appreciate this, as Alarm fans will. Um. How's it go? I, I'm a soldier wearing a bandana. Got a guitar I stole from Michael Peters. Well, I borrowed it, really. They gave me that guitar. Just one guitar. La 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 One guitar. Have you seen the video of Mike doing that on um YouTube that I shot? And my great friend Steve Summers, who hopefully is in the chat room right now watching this, uh, Steve Summers playing incredible jazz flute, baby. The alarm with jazz flute. That was a first. They did it live when we did the uh, Snowdonia Rocks walk um, a couple of years ago. Not last year, uh, 2019, but 2018. That's fab, 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 fab. Who else have got to say hello to? John Bryn Jones, my brother. Everyone say hello to John. Smash brow, the kinyown. Here's, here's something I learned from a conversation I had with my brother yesterday over uh, text. John wrote to me in Welsh to say, oh, man, you've got to see the Esteddfod. The Esteddfod is on TV now. People are reporting in via Zoom. It's great. And I wrote back, oh, yeah, I really must catch that. And John wrote back and said, don't be cynical. It's really good. I wasn't being cynical. And that's the trouble with text communication. Sometimes... It's very hard to convey the emotion of the moment, isn't it? So bear that in mind. If ever you're texting someone, if it could be taken two ways, maybe this is why we've added emojis to pe so people can understand the emotion that we're trying to convey in text. Because you can't see people's faces, can you? I often wonder if uh, blind people, uh, they hear the tone of people's voices, but if you read something um, in Braille, it's almost impossible to tell the tone of which it was written. Are there Braille emojis, maybe? Is such a thing possible? With hexamedecimal, I suppose so, yeah. I suppose so. Right, who else have I got to say hello to? Dave, jo Dave Jewell. Fellow Slade fan for over 11,000 years. Hello, Mr. Jewell. How are you in Wales? Looking after the Slade universe in Wales for me. Thank you. Uh, uh, Stuart Rotter, keep moving, Gareth. We can't see you with all that camouflage. Ah! Here's the thing about camouflage, right? People wear camo like this in the country to blend in, don't they? So they vanish. So you can't see them. But people wear camo in urban environments to stand out. Very wise is the Welshman. Um, uh, Mark Seppert, Carol Summers. It was brilliant, Car Gareth. Yes, Carol was there when um, uh, her husband, Steve, 
played the flute uh, with Mike Peters for uh, I'm a soldier, I've got one guitar and a jazz flute. I'll, maybe I'll post a link to that at the end of the program on the Facebook page or something, somewhere, so you can see it. It's worth seeing, it really is. Blooming beautiful, blooming beautiful. Uh, Rachel Knoll, thank you for the birthday song. Yes, we sing it a bit like that and other songs too. My mum and brother, who remember you from Music Box, are here and enjoy seeing you too. Oh, good morning. How wonderful. The entire Knoll tribe, or Rachel's tribe, gathering around a little computer screen in the Netherlands to say hello to someone they remember vaguely. From 35 years ago. Love you Dutch people. On hello, really. Thank you, Val. Uh, right. Um, uh, Andrea Davis Tuttle. Hello, now, guys. Nacy well tea boy. Yeah. Nacy well tea heavy Andrea. Um, it's nice to see you too. Uh, for those of you not getting a simultaneous Welsh to English translation right now, I'll have to do that. Always happy to speak the Welsh language on here. Steve Summers is here. Gareth, thanks for that. I offered you as my impetus last night for my own live cast. Doctor Who tune two weeks ago became mashed into a blues called train thing. Thanks. Yes. Steve, who played the flute on our, let me say jazz, but our folk Doctor Who theme uh, a couple of weeks ago on the live stream. Um, Steve is in a, a band in Newcastle called the um, Strictly Smoking jazz band is that what they're called steve strictly smoking hot jazz band amazing big band more than jazz really they're just huge if steve tells us the name have a look at it on the uh, the chat room and uh, you'll be able to um watch what they do steve uh, uh, in fact it was the fact that steve had done a bit of uh, uh zoom music with all his mates you know that thing where we all record separately in collage it together that's what actually inspired me to do the doctor who theme with steve i thought steve in newcastle playing pipes and whistle and me here in london playing guitar and all the other things we could do that so thank you very much to strictly smoking big band nigel adams also in the northeast how nice canny lad lovely to see you there um i use a lot of emojis no one understands me yeah i i've only fairly recently got into emojis i've always thought that words probably can spell it out but i've learned recently that it's more than the words paralinguistic cues you know um i did a series is ruth lloyd there ruth lloyd are you watching this right now are you ruth blair Uiti? my friend ruth lloyd and i worked on a tv series called club Klebran back in i think 90 1990 something like that well, we taught Welsh as a second language to schools in Wales. And we realised that you can say pretty much anything. Uh, and if you use a paralinguistic cue, people understand what you're saying. Like, dwi, mind, asan. I bet you understood, even if you don't speak Welsh, I'm going out. Dwi, mind, ilawr. I'm going down. Dwi, dwi mind, ivani. I'm going up. You see, paralinguistic cues and emojis are kind of like paralinguistic cues for language, aren't they, in some ways? They support the, the idea, the, the sentiment, the emotion. That's why they're called emojis. In fact, ooh, I wonder, I, I hadn't planned to show you this, but I made um, a bit of video for a BBC... TV program many, 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 many years ago uh, at the birth of uh, what we called emoticons then, before we called them emojis. Um, where is it? Where is it going to be? The broadcast archive. Have I actually got it? Um, let's have a look. All movies, broadcast archive. Mm, no, maybe I'll have to have a look for that another no, no I'm, it's worth showing you this it's worth you showing you this no but not i'm not going to search for it while i'm supposed to be talking to you guys um oh okay lee whiting is asking hey gaz gareth not gaz 
Gareth, do you eat marathons? No, you eat Snickers. Do you drive a Datsun? No, you drive a Nissan. Yes, Mr. Whiting, I will answer your question. If you if you preface it with Gareth. Yes, uh, yes, send me the question. It takes about 30 or 40 seconds uh, between uh, me broadcasting and stuff coming back to me. So there might be a little delay. But um, So while that's coming in, Yestin R. Lloyd, there's a name I've not seen before. Hello, Mr. Lloyd. Come right, Yestin. Text and emails can be so insidious sometimes. It's easy to be taken the wrong way. Yeah, exactly. My brother and I had that happen to us. Earlier on this week, absolutely possible. Bike Shed Digital Media, John Coombs is with us tonight. Uh, lots of possibilities still to explore here, Gareth. What, what are we talking about? Music, John? Are we talking about? Uh, uh, are we talking about emoticons? I, who knows? Who knows? Um, uh, where is that? What? What was the name of that program? I wish I could remember what it was called. Um, I could find it for you, that thing about emoticons. It's called The Kit. The program is called The Kit. So maybe if I filed it properly, it's under The Kit. No. Uh, no. Let's do a big search. Let's ask it to do a big search. Kit. And while it's hunting for that, we can have a, a further conversation. And another sip of Pendarian. In fact, it's quarter past nine. You know the routine, don't you? We've actually, this is funny, we've established sort of a routine on this program now. It takes me about 15 minutes to say hello to everyone who's online. I do a song, uh, respond to whatever it is you're talking about. I show you a couple of clips of things that I've harbored here. Save the big preview for the last sort of 45 minutes of the show, uh, last 15 minutes of the show, then finish with a song. But uh, it's time for the first song. Maybe I'm a bit late because we had that mess about version of. Um, one guitar before. Is that, is that in tune? It's not in tune, is it? I think I bashed my guitar. Hang on, hang on. That's better. It's a lot better. Um, right then. Here's a song. Um, I don't know if I'm going to sing this properly. I might mess about with this song because it's actually um, the first three songs I ever bought. Uh, I think I got in, was it 1971, November? Dave Jewell will know the answer to this. Slade's Cause I Love You is released, I think, in November 1971. I would have been 10 years old. And I bought three records with vouchers that I got from my nine, my grandmother, that's what we called nine, from W.H. Smith. And I, I can't remember if they were Woolworths vouchers and I got them from Hollywell. Or they were W.H. Smith vouchers and I went to Chester. The feeling it was Chester. And I got three records from Chester. The first one was Cause I Love You by Slade, of course. The second one was Ernie by Benny Hill. I was 10 years old. It was a novelty record. It was number one. And the third one was this song, which is um, by one of the greatest voices to come out of Liverpool. Something, something tells me something's going to happen tonight. I read in the papers that German eye people will make it tonight. The stars will be shining, my sign is aligning with love. So come on, let's make and take everything that we've been dreaming of. Something tells me something's gonna happen to you. The smile on my face is the smile that you wear in a moment or two. So get it together, you see, it's gonna be alright Cause something tells me something's gonna happen tonight I always think that bit, that bit should be sung uh, in another great voice to come out of Liverpool Elvis Costello, it should go 
Something tell me something's gonna happen tonight When I woke up this morning With sunshine in through my window Wrong key Everything that's happened So far has turned out right Like Cliff Richard, you know Everything that's happened it gives her it's tonight right It's a lip And I got every reason to feel it's getting better It's getting better every minute Can't wait until we meet tonight Everybody! Cause baby something tells me something's gonna happen to you the smile on my face is the smile you are wearing a moment or two. Now, I reckon that lyric is wrong. That's how it's been transcribed. The smile on my face is the smile you are wearing a moment or two. Now, to make sense of that, it should say, the smile on my face is the smile you were wearing a moment or two ago. What I think Scylla actually sang was, the smile on my face is the smile you'll be wearing in a moment or two. So, something tells me something's gonna happen to you. The smile on my face is the smile you will... The smile on my face is the smile you'll be wearing a moment or two. See? So get it together, you see, it's gonna be alright. Cause something tells me something's gonna happen to me. Oh baby, something tells me something's gonna happen to you The smile on my face is the smile you'll be wearing in a moment or two So get it together, you see, it's gonna be alright Cause something tells me something's gonna happen to that. <laughs> Horrible, wasn't it? Yet, yeah, Scylla, now I did that song in C. I had to transpose the key for that song so I could sing it. Scylla sings it in G. And it was written in G. So it's right up there way up there. I always thought that it was a Berg Bacharach song, but it wasn't. It was actually a song written by two blokes called Roger, one of whom, I'm embarrassed to say, wrote songs for Brotherhood of Man later in his life. <laughs> Brotherhood of Man. He may have been the guy who wrote Tie a Yellow Ribbon. I may be wrong. I may be wrong. Right, let's have a look at the questions. Um, yeah, Daz Munro, Struf. I bet you weren't expecting to hear that, Daz Munro. Good evening, my friend. Um, a lot, a lot of fun, comments James Ramsden. Yeah, Scylla was a massive star in the 70s, more than the 60s. And she had a entertainment show uh, on ITV, I think, rather than BBC. Uh, sort of six, seven o'clock on Saturday evenings. It was huge, like the X Factor, you know, the big entertainment show that families all watch together. And I loved that show. And I loved that song. And the flip side, because I think it was a double A side rather than a B side. Flip side to Something Tells Me Something's Gonna Happen Tonight was a song called La 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 Lou. La 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 Lou, I love you. <laughs> really corny. And uh, I think that was in the movie version of Please Sir. Little fact for you there. Right. Um, uh, who have I not said hello to? D. Daly, the be not the best song Macca ever wrote. No, nope. oh, hang on. We may be at cross purposes here. Because uh, I don't think Paul McCartney wrote that song, did he? Um, what song did you, are you talking about, D? He did write a song for Scylla, didn't he? What was Scylla's big song? Maybe it's in the notes. Let's have a look. Oh, Carol Summers, mum and dad dance around the kitchen to that song. What a romantic image. Your mum and dad dancing together. Gladstone and Mona. Oh, oh. Took me back to being 10 years old, eh? Thank you. Um, um, Andreas Davis, Tutil Tilchwaranda, Kerdar Rurgolel. 
Chaval, you're playing very good. A reasonable, a very good musician. Thank you very much indeed. I'm a terrible musician. Terrible. Awful. I can just about get through a song. And sometimes finish it in the same key that I started. Starting's the problem. Getting the first note, I can never pitch things properly. I'm just lucky my computer's finished its search and it hasn't found the kit. That's frustrating. I was going to show you the thing about emoticons. Emily Savage. Hello, Emily. Our youngest, my, my youngest, uh, our youngest, that the youngest member of our group is what I was trying to say. Emily, 17. Hey, Em, and your dad. I think I may have met your dad once a long time ago, Emily, being a Slade fan. How lovely to see you here. Because I Love You was the ringtone for me on your dad's phone. Oh, really? Because your dad's no longer around, is he? But he is. As long as there's Slade music, Emily, and you've got Slade on your phone, and I'm playing Slade music, your dad is still with us, okay? People are only with us, and people are with us until, until we stop thinking about them. And we never stop thinking about our parents and grandparents, do we? They're part of us. So your dad's still here. Um, uh, Blaze of Glory 2011, I have a special bottle of PT water for you here. PT water? Hmm. Like this. A special bottle of PT water. What is it? I need to know now. Um, Rocking Kitten is asking, is VB there too? Yeah, she's monitoring from the kitchen today, which is going to take 20 seconds for her to get this message. She might come through and wave in a minute or say hello. Because Indy, our youngest son, was just cooking some dinner for Violet. I had mine earlier on. Um, uh, Anne Ashmore, hello Anne, nice to have you with us again. Uh, still time for a copyright violation, yeah. Copyright police had a go at me last week, but I appealed the copyright violation and won. On grounds of uh, narration and uh, uh, I can't remember the other grounds, but won. Yeah, they said they came back within 24 hours. So, sorry, that's fine. So hopefully we won't drop off the air this week like we did last week. Uh Unsafe68, my great friend Lily, your energy is awesome tonight. Thank you, Lily. Thank you. And maybe I'm overcompensating because I realised about uh, 20 minutes before I went on air that I hadn't really ramped up. There's a process by which you sort of ramp up for a live broadcast emotionally. <laughs> Excuse me. And I realised I hadn't done it. So I thought, right, come on, go start doing this. Went and got a drink and maybe I've, I've started a bit high today. <laughs> maybe I'll come down a little bit. Um... Yes, a rocking kitten says you broke the routine. You didn't have sound problems. No, no sound problems this week. Show 10. We should have sorted it out by now. And will this be the last Gareth Jones live? <sighs> Might be. Might be. I haven't actually made up my mind yet. But I, I, I'd like to continue. But I'm aware that the lockdown is sort of coming to an end. And the whole purpose of this is to connect with people who I can't connect with in the real world and for you to connect with people that you can't connect with in the real world um but Tycho, my son is out tonight hanging out with his mates in the park because the lockdown allows that so if that is the future you know if by next week that's what we're going to be doing on saturday nights or friday nights enjoying a pender in two meters away from a friend then maybe my lockdown doesn't serve my lockdown live stream doesn't serve its purpose anymore uh, I haven't made up my mind. I, I will think about it. I will think about it. Um, uh, Pete Cole. Hello, Pete Cole. Hello, 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 Pete Cole. From the Alarm franchise. Uh, you missed the Alarm stuff. I'm a soldier wearing a bandana. Oh, hang on. Got another, while well, we're on the subject of the Alarm. Here's another Alarm thing for you. Yeah. This is my Alarmist... Um, uh, thing that I wear around my neck. Can you see what that is? It's a harmonica, which is very alarm, and uh, it actually works. It's only got about one, two, three, four notes, but enough to play where you're hiding on. Just about where were you hiding when the storm broke? Uh, right, Lee Whiting uh, was asking, um, I'm about to ask a question. 
So let me see if I can find it, Lee. Where is your question now? Uh, where is it? Oh, okay. Uh, hi, I'm Lee, but this is Mark Patterson talking. I'm a co-reimaginer of the adventure game Did You Watch It? with Lee Whiting. We really love the fun, happy feeling that Gilbert the Fridge gave to us growing up and your work in Get Fresh and How To. Thank you. Well, Gilbert wasn't on How To, but I know what you mean. Um, it's a hard thing to recreate today. What advice would you give us to recreate such shows as writers and reimagineers? And thank you for the magic. Oh, well, wow, thank you. No magic, just good sense, I think. Um, uh, I think, it's a good question, by the way. I think, I think Get Fresh was successful because it was unlike any other Saturday morning children's programme that had come before it. And Gilbert was unlike any puppet that you'd seen on Saturday morning television or even kids' television before. Snotty, green, offensive, completely uh, multi-personality disorder. Um, Charlotte Hindle, uh, my co-presenter on uh, Get Fresh, was unlike... Any female presenter you may have seen on Saturday morning television before. Utterly grounded. Utterly, utterly, utterly the girl next door. Magnificent for that. And Jan Samarco, who was uh, Adrian Mole, uh, was a sort of an unlikely, unusual choice. You see where I'm going here? Get Fresh, the theme tune to Get Fresh, was done by Mick Jones from Big Audio Dynamite. That's not like anything you'd see on children's television, is it? Uh, the titles to get fresh, were in, and the design of the Millennium Dustbin were inspired by um, Giga, the movie Alien, and, you know, softened up for children's television, we turned it into a scratcher, you know, and I think the success of how to of get fresh was down to its originality, and that was largely down to Janet Street Porter, who was the producer of the series, who had lots of really no, we're not going to do that, we're not going to do that, we're not going to do that, ideas. And then it was up to Tim, who worked beneath her, Tim Edmonds, to actually work out what it is we can do. If Janet says we can't do this, we can't do that, can't do that. I didn't wear bright colours, you know. I didn't wear uh, sort of the dungarees and bright shirt that you get on kids, had on kids' television up until that point. On Get Fresh, I almost exclusively wore black, I think, in the first year. I was a roadie, that's what I did. So... If you want to do something and make it stand out, uh, and if it stands out, it will be interesting uh, and original, then be original. Do stuff that people haven't done yet. Make it work. Um, and Gilbert was, was Gilbert was the best thing that ever happened to me on television. I've said this. And, you know, the first series of Get Fresh was successful. But the second series of Get Fresh, because Gilbert was there, I stepped outside of my door here, and people said to me, Hey, Gaz, where's Gilbert? Uh, wow, I realised people had something to talk to me about. They'd noticed him, and he was um, the, the skill. John Coombs, who was a great producer, he's on here on in the chat room right now. Who actually produced an episode of Get Fresh and lots of other great kids television programs. John would say that well, what you do is you choose a bunch of really, really good things. People are really good at their job: cameramen, producers, graphic artists, scriptwriters, comedians, performers, hosts. Put them together, give them environments in which to work and say, right, do what you do. Let them be creative. Give them the opportunity to do what they do. Don't stifle them. Give them an opportunity like this is doing. You know, live streaming just gives me an opportunity to broadcast from my living room. You know, do that and do it. Just start doing it. Nothing teaches you how to do something better than doing it. So just start doing it. Whatever it is you're planning to do. I never watched Nightmare, by the way. Uh, I was kind of busy in those days making programs. I didn't get to watch a great deal of television. And I'm not much of a gamer. Violet is. Violet's a fantastic gamer. She loves uh, interactive entertainment. She loves um, escape rooms. And she loves interactive theatre and stuff like that. Not for me. I like to go and sit and separate from theatre and I go and watch a show watch people perform if people involve me in it I, I kind of feel embarrassed a bit guilty you know if I was in the show I'd be happy but as an audience member being pulled into that I find that really uncomfortable bizarrely 
as someone who's used to performing, I find it really uncomfortable. Okay, I hope that answers your question. A long and fruity answer to a complicated question. 25 to 10 already. Time for another sip. What else are we drinking tonight, by the way, people? What are you drinking? This PT water. I'm very interested in that. Ooh, lovely. Um, I can see a conversation going on between Daz Monroe and D Daly here. Yeah, Step Inside Love was the song McCartney wrote. Step Inside Love. I can't sing Scylla songs without sounding like uh, Elvis Costello. In fact, I did a mashup once of um, Costello and uh, Scylla. I took both their versions of a Burt Bacharach song. Any, anyone who had a heart. Oh, what a song. Oh, I love that song. Anyone who ever loved. Boom, boom. You look at me. Boom, boom. I know that I love you. And I, I turned it into a duet with Scylla and uh, Elvis singing it together. I play it right now, but the copyright police have probably nailed me. Maybe. Um, uh, right, where were we? Where were we? Where were we? Um, Mark Sepek is on the Orange Tango. Good choice, sir. I preferred... Um, uh, uh, I Am Brew. I love Lucasade, the original, and I Am Brew, both from Cannes. When I'm in Scotland, uh, you know, I, I like... I, I will drink Coca-Cola from Cannes, but when I'm in Scotland, I won't drink Coke. I will only drink I Am Brew. Because it's like drinking Guinness when you're in Ireland, isn't it? <laughs> you know, you can drink the local stuff. Penderin. When you're Welsh in London. Um, uh, Clementine Gin. Andrea Davis Tuttle is drinking Clementine Gin. Oh, that's nice. That sounds very nice. You can see that my um, computer is still searching here. And I asked it to search for things called kit. And it's found nothing with the word kit in it. It's found Ferrari pictures picture of a kite but no i don't think we're going to find this bit of video should we show you that uh, bit of video then right let's let's have a look it's uh 20 it's 22 let's have a look i've got some uh, stuff to share with you tonight um as you know my friend michael coming is on here michael uh is uh he called you matico in the chat window i think aren't you michael michael and i great old pals we met probably about 1989, 1990, I think, um, when I was a presenter at The Children's Channel, a satellite and cable channel here in the UK and also in Europe. Um, and uh, Michael was a director, rostered to produce, to direct a bunch of programmes by a bunch of people, some of them, one of them including the uh, the wonderful Mick Robinson from uh, Robertson, not Robinson, isn't it? Mick Robertson, formerly of Magpie. He was the one in Magpie who looked like a cross between Mark Bolan and Brian May. And he was about as cool as both of them, actually. What a lovely man. But Michael, Michael and I, uh, palled up. We got on really well. We're about the same age. We both love uh, space-related things like this. Here he is, Michael Cumming and uh, me wearing my... Look at that suit, by the way. That suit... Uh, was inspired by uh, Ed Straker from the UFO. Such a Jerry Anderson fan am I that uh, we were filming at John F. Kennedy Space Center. And yes, that is a real Saturn V moon rocket behind, one that they never used, one that they had uh, set up for Apollo uh, 18, I think, or Apollo 19 even, uh, which they never used. Uh, and there's Michael, who, um, uh, together with me... Uh, First of all, we made programs together at the Children's Channel. Then we um, decided we wanted to make some programs uh, for other broadcasters. So we formed a company called Better Television. And uh, my friend Tim, a producer, said, oh, I would have killed for the name Better Television. I wish I'd invented a, pro a TV station or TV production company called Better Television. There's our logo, Better Television limited we were and we um we also did a corporate job 
I'm laughing because I know what's coming. Uh, when you make children's programs, you do uh, you spend a lot of time at sort of um, children's events, you know, uh, spectacular outdoor events for kids, and they often have stuff there uh, that you end up making uh, features about for like the children's show ate up material. We had to make loads of material. So we make items about pretty much anything we saw. But one thing we saw was this thing called the Wiki Wacky Fly. And uh, the guy who owned the Wiki Wacky Fly franchise saw me doing an item about it for uh, the Children's Channel Club, which was the program I did with Michael. And he said, oh, would you make a little film for us promoting the Wiki Wacky Fly? Uh, I'm going to show you the logo. Hang on. Oh, hang on. No, 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 no. no, no. I'll save the logo for later. Uh, is would you um, would you make a little video for us? We made a kind of a corporate video uh, for the Wiki Wacky Fly. Arguably one of the daftest things I have ever made with Michael. And I mentioned it. Oh, Michael mentioned it on the chat last week. And so I got Michael to send it to me. Here it is. This is what television was like. 4x3, before we went 16x9, 4x3, from about 1990, 1991. Hi, Gareth Jones here to tell you about a great new way of having fun that's the only way of making a profit by sending your customers up the wall. This is the Human Fly Wall Game. In case you haven't already seen it on TV or in the press, here it is in action. It couldn't be easier to do. You run, you jump, you bounce, and you stick, just like a human fly. And because it's so simple, it means anyone can do it. And it's really safe, because the Human Fly Game is entirely inflatable. So there are no sharp edges, and it's impact absorbing. The whole thing is really well made and it should be high quality, it's taken years to research and develop. These safety cushions are built in, so you can't hurt yourself. The landing wall is soft, colourful and furry. And because it's sloped like this, then that makes sticking to it a certainty every time. What do you think? Brilliant! Nice suit. The suits follow a design used by free fall parachutists, held together at the ankles by Velcro, at the waist by a good strong strap, and at the cuff by more Velcro. They're ventilated to keep you cool. They come in some brilliant colours. They're well trendy, but do they stick? <laughs> you bet they stick. No matter how you land. And that's the advantage. Customers will want to do it time and time again. The Human Flywall game is now available to existing operators of inflatables or as a new business venture in the form of a starter kit from Fly on the Wall International. It's a complete kit that includes everything to get you started in business. Most important is the Human Fly inflatable wall made of fire retardant material which passes the highest of international safety standards. You can have your phone number printed on the wall to advertise your operation. The kit also comes with these human fly jumpsuits, available in five sizes, each in a different fluorescent colour. There's a full range of support equipment, including an international one-year warranty, hundreds of promotional flyers, flyers, get it? And of course, operating instructions. You want more? OK, how about a video like this that reaches people you can't get to personally? Fly on the Wall International will back you up and do everything to help you get started. All you have to do is plug in, switch on and watch your business inflate. The wall, however, deflates for easy transportation. Ready for you to take to fates, fairs, parties, schools, clubs, universities, fundraisers. In fact, anywhere people go for fun, indoors or out. 
You can take it out yourself and charge customers, or simply hire the whole lot out to an event. The Human Fly is a brand new leisure sport for six-year-olds and upwards, and it's revolutionizing bouncing. Meet Wiki Wacky Fly, who's licensed to appear on all Human Fly merchandising worldwide. As an official Fly on the Wall operator, you automatically become entitled to sell products from the Wiki Wacky Fly merchandising range. It's colorful and it's happening. So once your customers have conquered the wall, they'll want to tell their friends about it by wearing sweatshirts, t-shirts, there's balloons and badges for little ones, and caps for cool people. And all this means much more profit for you. If you're just starting out in business, or you want to add the human fly wall gain to your existing venture, Fly on the Wall International will be able to help. Already, they're planning for the future. This is just the beginning for the human fly wall game. Available soon, for hire or to buy, will be the human fly inflatable weather shield for outdoor events where the show must go on. And there are a lot more ideas in development too. There's a buzz in the air about the human fly game. It's the only way that you can drive your customers up the wall and make a profit. I've got a fly now. I'll see you soon. Unbelievable. The music for that was done by my great friend uh, Steve Allen Jones, by the way, who did pretty much, he's, he's done music for pretty much everything I've ever done. And uh, great to see that again. I, I don't think I've seen it since 1990. And uh, was it Michael and I used to say, because we were quite groovy, Michael and I, we wore flared trousers in those days. Uh, we used to say, uh, uh, flares, hairs, and trade fairs. <laughs> and uh, I just read in the comments, uh, Michael said that um, he used exactly the same shot of me upside down there to pull out to reveal uh, in Brass Eye. Cause Michael directed uh, Chris Morris's Brass Eye, which uh, some of it is on uh, YouTube. Also, um, uh, if you want to see an afternoon on the moon, which I've said before on this is my the apotheosis of my career, the thing I enjoyed most doing, the, the best bit, arguably, uh, uh, you know, in terms of success that I made with Michael in 1994, um, that is available to view on Vimeo now, and uh, I will uh, I will post a link, um, uh, probably. Uh, uh, Probably on my Facebook, the Gareth, the Guest Up Jones Facebook page. So you know what to do. Go there, like, subscribe, share, all, all that kind of thing. Uh, um, because, um, you know, the more more people who say they want this to continue, the more chance of, their, of it actually continuing. I was just reading the notes and uh, I saw um, uh, Tintin, Rocking Kitten, say that maybe you should do it once a month. Maybe you should. Maybe once a month. Yeah, um, that's an idea. That's an idea, but uh, we'll see. I'll, I'll make a decision over the week. Now, my uh, Damien Sung, hello, Dazza. Um, I can see you requesting us playing body rap, but you've embarrassed yourself here because body rap was in last week's program, and you clearly didn't see that, did you? You've let the side down, which is why we're playing uh, Wiki Wacky Fly, because I played the body rep thing. And Michael said, it'll be Wiki Wacky Fly next. But there you go, uh, a peek back into my head. And by the way, uh, let, let me just show you this. Uh, where are we? Uh, let me get the right frame up. Uh, Great new way of having fun. That's hang on, let me get it up. Here we go. Um, look at my hair. Over a certain length, my hair goes to sort of... Um, what do you call those, V? Ring, ringlets. Ringlets. Violet's in the room, by the way, now. She's had her dinner and is coming. Sitting quietly over there. Hang on. You want to say hello, V? Hello. If you're going to sing, we're going to have to start challenging for this. Ooh, there's a plane going over at the moment. Helicopter or something. Police, we're in trouble. Look at that. 1990. 
Don't want to think about that. 30 years ago. That's that's insane, isn't it? Absolutely insane. Right. Let's have a look at what you're saying. Um, the fly on the wall. Is it suitable for raves? I bet some of you out there may have encountered something like that at raves over the years. I bet. I bet there are non-copyright versions of that uh, appearing in the... Um, uh, in I just got a message from Damien. That's what that belief was. <laughs> um, I bet there were some non-copyright versions of the wiki wacky fly thing uh, at raves, and I bet some of you um, have had a go at it. It was great fun, great fun. I used to be uh, a trampolinist. I did a bit of trampoline in school, so I was quite good at bouncing and uh, going upside down. So I, I really enjoyed that. Really enjoyed that. I like bouncy castles as well. I put me back out, didn't I? Last time we went on a bouncy castle together, V, I put me back out, didn't I? Ooh. It was an adult-sized bouncy castle, completely white, designed for adults, in Camden. And it was great fun. So much fun that I put me back out. Right, uh, Lee Whiting, we love the alarm. Do you like Tangerine Dream? And we also miss cinema. Do you ever go to Prince Charles? What, Prince Charles... Um, What's his name? Windsor. Claims to be the Prince of Wales. Nothing to do with him, no. Do I go to the Prince Charles Theatre? Uh, do I? Where is it, V? I must have done at some point, yeah. Is that where I saw the... We did. We s No, no, that was the Leicester Square Theatre, wasn't it? We saw Michael... Yeah, Violet saying that we saw Michael Cummings' Brass Eye Night at the Leicester Square Theatre. Uh, she thought it was a Prince Charles. I must have been to the Prince Charles. Must have been. Um, did the alarm uh, have a preview of vinyl there? Possibly, possibly, possibly. Do I like um, Tangerine Dream? Yes. Rubicon. Oh, that's a fine album. My brother... John Brin used to listen to Tangerine Dream when I was uh, about eight or ten years old. So, yeah, I've been listening to Tangerine Dream uh, since then. Yeah, my brother introduced me to Tangerine Dream. Uh, no Crimping Tongs, Blaze of Glory, 2011. No, not in that period. Crimping Tongs were during the gas top period. Uh, and then my hair, when it gets long, just goes uh, ringlety, really. Ringlety. It's going a bit bonkers at the moment. The, these bits are starting to curl all over the place. Look, slightly Hitler, isn't it? <laughs> Is it time for a Hitler? <laughs> That's not a Hitler. I don't know what that is, but it's not a Hitler. And at the back, I'm actually closer to Gaz Top at the back than I've ever been. It's long at the back here. Because you can't get a haircut at the moment, can you? I really, really need one. Really need one. Right, messages. Where are we? Gosh, five minutes to go. No! Prince Charles Cinema is in Leicester Place. Yes, there must have been there. Thank you very much for answering my questions, by the way. Emily Savage was born 13 years after that video. Emily Savage, you were born after everybody else on this chat group. And I love that. It's marvellous. Um, uh... Oh, the credits at the end, it said it was suitable for raves. Is that right, Damien? Is that what it says in the message? Really? How fantastic. Um, right, have I missed anything? Uh, you get paid to do that? Uh, yes, we got paid to make that film. I'm assuming that's what you refer to. Right, right. Uh, time for a tune, I think, as it's five to ten. Um, uh, I haven't made anything specially for you this week. But I have got a, a little video that I made specially for my car podcast, Gareth Jones on Speed, uh, for you. And I'm, I'm going to play this for two reasons. One, it features a bit of North Wales in it. It features uh, Trelawned and Dezeth in it, which is very close to where I'm from. I wasn't brought up in Trelawned or Dezeth, but they're within the same county I consider myself from. And it's utterly, utterly beautiful. And I'm in the video. You can see me driving in my old car, my old Toyota Sora, leaving um, uh, where my mother moved to. We're from Hollywell originally, but we moved to Trelawned. My brother and my sister Mel are both in Trelawned now. 
Uh, my other sister, Karis, is in Mould, Er with Greek. And um, so in this, you see me driving around my, my homestead. But the main reason I, I'm, I'm playing you is um, uh, I think it stands up as a piece. You know, most of the songs that we do for Gareth Jones and Speed are about cars. And so you need to know about cars to really understand uh, what the song is about. But for this, it's, it's about people and cars, really. It's called um, Chicks Dig Cars. And uh, that's not me being sexist, I hope. Pause, 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 pause. That's not me being sexist, I hope. Um, I wrote the, the song in the style of uh, Lou Reed. And uh, I just thought Lou Reed in the 70s would have written a song called Chicks Dig Cars. So uh, here I am trying to be uh, Lou Reed in a song for Gareth Jones of Speed called Chicks Dig Cars. Now we ah, wrong book. Don't you hate it when that happens? Let's try again. Hang on, here we go. Okay, technical issues here. I hit a button, you. didn't I? I yeah, we hoped it would make him Let me re cue this. Because I clearly hit a button that messed, that took the screen away. Should we try that? Oh, stop playing! Stop! Should we try that again? Okay, chicks, dig cars, take two. to buy himself a push bike hoped it would make him handsome and fit but his next girlfriend left him for a guy with a soft turbo she realized Mickey was a bit of a twit now Mickey doesn't ride that bike anymore in fact he don't ride anything at all while his ex-girlfriend rides a sweet called Lars because chicks dig cars. Yeah. Chicks just dig cars. From then on, Mickey used public transport became a green and socialist kind of guy. That didn't attract any women either. I'm sure you can guess why. Finally, Mickey caved in after thinking real hard. He got himself some wheels. 
but an AMC Pacer didn't pull any chicks. Cause chicks dig cool automobiles. They've gotta be decent cars. Chicks dig cars. Mickey decided he needed some action. Took some action of his own. Bought a Bentley equipped with a blower. Yep, he got himself blown. Chicks dig cars. Chicks dig cars. Now Mickey had a wife who was mostly happy. So good so far. But his wife divorced him, took the house in the Bentley. Because this chick dug cars. Yeah, she really dug cars. More than she dug him. Come and stick your head in there, look at that red dot. Come back here a bit, there. This is Sean. It's recording at the moment. Oh, you're joking. <laughs> it's recording a wall. Garrett Jones on speed! My great friend, Sean Gresley Jones, making a cameo appearance at the end of that video. Uh, doesn't North Wales look beautiful? in that doesn't it look gorgeous and my old Sora as well my old car there it is uh let's see if i can do something here for you hang on there's there's the Sora with the um, graphics i crudely drew um for that and uh and look that, that that's the point of view right i stuck a gopro camera on the bonnet of my car and this is actually uh, a model of my car oops wrong button Model of my car, it was a Toyota Sora known as a, a Lexus LS300 in California. But the Toyota Sora in Japan, which is where I bought it and imported it or exported it from Japan where I was back to the UK. I loved that car, had it for uh, 19 years, I think. Great car, missed that car, gone now. Whoops, not my microphone, not my camera. Um, I've been trying to read the uh, oh the day war broke out. Now, I've been trying to read the uh, comments on Facebook, but for some reason I can only see comments from the last sort of twelve minutes. So apologies if you're commenting on Facebook and expecting a response. I can't see them. I really, 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 really can't. If you come over to um, YouTube for the remaining five ten minutes of this show. Uh, I might just see them, but I can tell you, I can comment to what we've got here. Um, Wayne Smith Dykins, um, uh, uh, Wayne from Greenfield watching here. Another great watch, Gaz Top. Thank you very much indeed. Greenfield, part of Hollywell, my hometown. It's lovely having people from my hometown here. Lisa Zeitlinger. Hello, Violet. Your first visit. Lisa, your first visit. In that case, you are a VIP. Anyone who is joining us for the first time tonight is a VIP. Thank you very much for joining the gang. We love having you here. And I saw um, someone asking, it's gone now, you see, unfortunately, things scroll on. Um, someone was asking uh, when that video was. Was that uh, before or after Get Fresh, talking about the uh, Wiki Wacky Fly video? And it was actually uh, two years after Get Fresh. Get Fresh finished in 1988. And I started growing my hair. So I had it cropped really short in 1988. It started growing really, really long. And by uh, 1991, it was really long. And there was a reason for this. Um, uh, I was, um, I was, I'd been doing some Welsh television. Did that programme that I mentioned earlier on, Club Clebran, teaching people how to speak Welsh. Uh, Welsh language television, I should say. And also was in a drama series in Wales called Muina Fapir Newydd, which means more than a newspaper. And uh, Muina Fapir Newydd um, told the story of a newspaper in Aberystwyth in the 1960s. And I played a bit of a hippie, who I kind of modelled on my brother uh, in, in that programme. Uh, and it started in about 1967, so I was a bit of a beatnik with sort of Beatles-y kind of hair. And I knew that the next series was going to be 1969, so I just let my hair grow and grow and grow until I had that really, really long hair. And uh, 
Yeah, you got to do a bit of acting, a bit of acting in Wales. I, thinking about it, most of the Welsh language television I've done has been acting rather than presenting. Club Clebran was a, a, a drama series. Uh, Moina Fapir Newydd was a drama series. And Shoy Carril, uh, Carril's show, was a, a drama series. It was a comedy series, actually. And I, I think I've just made up my mind that maybe I should show you a bit of that next week. So, well, all I'm going to say is I'll, I, will do a, I will do one more Gareth Jones live. And uh, because I know my friend Damien, who doesn't speak a word of Welsh, um, saw the Shoy Carril, Carril show that we did, uh, where I actually play Gaz Top. Seriously. I had to appear as myself, but as how I appeared in the 80s, in a wig, dressed all in black. And it's a story about, it started off, it was called uh, Apocalypse Rill, where the apocalypse had happened, the zombie apocalypse, and only four people were left, and one of them had to save Wales. Uh, one of them was a gypsy, the other one worked in the Sun Centre, the other one worked in a call centre, and the fourth one was Gaz Top, <laughs> me. Very funny, very bizarre. So maybe I'll show you that next week. Right, have I done everything I said on my list? Let me check my list, because sometimes I actually make notes about things I was going to do. No, we've done it all. Check Facebook. check Facebook to see. Happy birthday, Rachel, says Diane Blackburn. Uh, Lisa Zeitlinger, you are a VIP. If you say on Facebook you're not a VIP, you are now. Uh, Kevin Snellgrove, Kevin, hello, Kevin Snellgrove, uh, hang on, hang on, wait there, wait there, uh, where's it gone, hang on, I'm not far away, I've got it here somewhere, damn it, there it is, hang on, there's more, where's the other one, I've got two books here, there we, here it is, here we are, here we are, my great friend Kevin Snellgrove, who I met in Doncaster, in Yorkshire, in 1980, when I was working in a laboratory. I went on a training course. Can't even remember what we were learning in Doncaster. Something to do with civil engineering. And met this guy, um, Kevin Snellgrove, who became a great friend. Kevin became an author. I became a telepresenter. Kevin became an author. And Kevin uh, wrote, has written... I don't know how many books, dozens and dozens of books, but here's one. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, the official facts and figures and statistics um, on the carry on people. Oh, yeah, oh, I love carry on. Who doesn't love the carry on? Oh, what's the carry on? Lo love that. Great book. Thank you, Kevin. And a couple of years ago, or last year, Kevin wrote this The Greatest Music Quiz Book. Thousand questions covering all genres, ten genres of music, and it's got a foreword by me. He asked me to write the foreword, which is a huge uh, privilege. Thank you very much indeed, and I hope I was qualified to write it. So, if you want to get that book, it is available on Amazon digitally and a physical version with a foreword by me, and it's got some wicked, wicked questions in there. Let's test you, right? Let's test you. Here we go. Um, uh, uh, give you give you a hand. Oh, no, I'm not going to read jazz. I'm not going to ask any jazz questions. I don't know any jazz questions. Um, uh, best selling singles. Here we go. Can you name the artist who had the best selling single? Two seven question two hundred seventy one. In the summertime, nineteen seventy. If you just shouted out Mongo Jerry and you couldn't stop yourself, well done. Uh, Careless Whisper, 1984. Wham, correct. Mull of Kintyre, 1977. Yeah, you see, you do quite well with that. But, okay, US pop bands, match the year to when the band was formed. En Vogue, what year were they formed? The Osmonds. Ah, now, what year were the Osmonds formed? Think about it. Uh, the Weather Girls. Destiny's Child, The Beach Boys, all the answers are there, all the answers are there, it's a great book, it really is a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant book, if you like quizzes, not very good on games, but I like a quiz, I like to uh, 
improve my knowledge or try and work out the answer using a, a, a process of elimination. I took part in a pub quiz with my friend Zog and Violet and a couple of other mates. When was this, V? Something like my 45th birthday or something, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, one of the questions was to estimate the depth of the uh, Atlantic Ocean. What is the depth of the Atlantic Ocean? Me and Zog sat down and worked it out, and we managed to estimate it within 60 metres of its actual depth. <laughs> those are the sort of games I like. Okay, last couple of mentions to those of you on Facebook. Um, Alessandro Calcagno. Is that, did I say your name now? Alessandro Calcagno from Italy. Buonasera! Oh, Italy. Oh, oh. I miss Italy. It's been a long time since I was in Italy. I think the last time I was in Italy was 1999 for the San Marino Grand Prix at Imola. And uh, we stayed in Umbria. I love Umbria. Actually, no, that's not true. We went to Sardinia, didn't we, V? With the kids when they were about... Taika was about five years old, so that would have been 2005. That was the last time we were in Italy. And the people of Sardinia were fantastic to our children, weren't they? They welcomed our children when we went to restaurants. And, uh, yeah, I, I miss... I, You know, I love Italian cars. I used to own an Italian car for many, many years. And uh, I love all Italian cars. And well, one of my great pleasures, the things I like to do most, you know, given time out, is to sit on the corner of a piazza in Italy, drinking fine coffee, eating spaghetti alla vongola and an insalata tricolore, and watching autobianchis and Maseratis and lanchas and alphas go by. Oh. The good things in life. Soon come. When lockdown is truly over, I'll be heading to Italy. Right. Have I said hello to everyone? Uh, Kevin Snellgrove says, a signed paperback copy uh, is available from him direct for nine ninety nine. And if you want to contact with Kevin Snellgrove, it, these are the sponsors of the program. You guys, right? Yeah. Um, go to uh, the official Gareth Gaztop Jones Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash Gareth Gaztop jones no inverted commas just gareth gaztop jones and you will see kevin snell snellgrove there and you can click on him and contact him and he will sell you a copy at a, a fantastic price there you go it's a special discount price i do a special price for you huh? right uh, one last um hurrah for all the messages on youtube i hope i haven't met daz monroe says it was 1958 for the formation of the osmonds was daz right we find out I think you're right. I think you are right because the Osmonds were doing sort of doo-wop stuff, weren't they? And they, f if memory serves, they first appeared on the Andy, was it the P Andy Williams show or the Perry Como show? Can't quite remember. In the very early 60s. So uh, let's have a look. Um, where's the answer? Got to know now, haven't we? Got to know. According to Kevin Snellgrove's book, Kevin will probably have the answer before I can get there. Oh, am I going to find it? I can't find the page. US pop bands. US pop bands. Stage names. Random selection. Hey, look it up. That's my... Years active. Uh, Osmonds. And oh, no, that's years active. I want to know years formed. Year born... Round of selection. There are 10,000 questions. A thousand questions, silly, not 10,000. It's going to take me ages to find the answer. Look it up. You will work it out. You will find it out. I'm sure. Uh, thank you for watching Gareth Jones on Speed. Um, we, not Gareth Jones on Speed. Gareth Jones Live. That's my car podcast, isn't it? Shame on me. I've actually got two songs to finish with tonight. I'll save the other one for next. No, no. Let's run a little longer. Let's run a little longer. Let's do both those songs. Because one of them, I'm hoping, will amuse you. And the Violet's, Violet's right says, don't do it all now. Save it for next week. But what if there isn't a next week? I've already said there's going to be. But um, here's something I, um, 
had in my mind for years that I wanted to share with you. A song by the Stone Roses. Do you remember the Stone Roses? Of course you do. But there's a, there's a, the end of the bridge in the Stone Roses, I Am the Resurrection, leads very clearly to another song. And I will show you what I mean if I can play it for you. Here we go. Down, down, you bring me down. I hear you knocking down my door and I can't sleep at night, you know. Your face, it has no place. No room for you inside my house. I need to be alone. Don't waste your words. I don't need anything from you. I don't care where you've been or what you plan to do. Now listen, honey, it doesn't matter where you go or what you do. I want to spend each moment of the day with you. Oh, look what's happened with you, just one kiss. I never knew that I could be in love like this. It's crazy, but it's true. I only want to be with you. See what I mean? And next time you listen to that song, I bet when you get to the bridge before the chorus, you'll want to sing, I only want to be with you. Turn, 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 turn. Get the right key. Mm. See, it's always starting, I said, didn't I? Getting the right key. Turn, turn. I wish you'd learn. There's a time and place for everything. I've got to get it through. Cut and lose, cause you're no use. Couldn't stand another second in your company. Don't waste your words, I don't need anything from you. I don't care where you've been or what you plan to do. Now listen, honey, doesn't matter where you go or what you do. I want to spend each moment of the day with you. Oh, look what's happened with just one kiss. I never knew that I could be in love like this. It's crazy, but it's true. I only want to be with you. And just to bring it all back home... Hang on, let's see if I can do this. I, I only want to be with you. You stopped and smiled at me and asked if I'd care to dance. I fell into your open arms and didn't stand a chance. Now listen, honey, I am the resurrection. I am the light. I could never bring myself to hate you as I'd like <gasps> <gasps> I am the resurrection and I am the light I couldn't ever bring myself to hate you as I'd like as I'd like That's it. I'm going to save the song I was going to finish with for next week. Something for Alarm fans. Uh, a special request, actually, that somebody asked me to do previously. So, uh, uh, oh, hang on. I'm just uh, One last note. This is great. Stuart Rutter says, Noel admitted he nicked the dude's riff. Oh, really? Hang on. Is it Stand By Me? The Stone Roses is amazing. There's an Oasis song that makes me want to sing All the Young Dudes. Don't ask which one. 
fine. Okay. Well, fair play to the Stone Roses if they own up to where they got their songs from. Um, for instance, um, I, I I tweeted about on tweeted on Facebook about um, a Green Day song. Uh, it's called Jesus of Suburbia. Halfway through that song, it becomes 68 Guns by the Alarm. And I'm not... Yes, it does, Finn. Don't disagree with me. Finn? 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 Come here. Going to say hello? No, he's not going to say hello. Um, I tweeted about this, uh, Facebooked about this, uh, uh, because the alarm settled out of court with uh, Green Day over that. So, yeah, even the legal guys agreed that um, it was the same song. That's it for Gareth Jones Live for this week. It's goodbye from Finn. He's out the window watching birds. It's goodbye from Violet. Bye. And uh, it's goodbye from me. And if you would like this to continue, please do spread the word on all your social media channels. Tell people, the more people who come, the more likely I am to continue doing it. And apologies once again if I didn't see your message on Facebook or didn't respond to your message on uh, the uh, YouTube screen tonight. Because for some reason it didn't appear on my monitor here. Bizarre. But um, love you guys. This was Gareth Jones Live. And I was Gareth Jones. Cheers, y'all.